All right, so this is just gonna be a quick video showing the differences in the Zebra GX400 series. I have a GX420D and a GX430T, both two very different models. I was just gonna talk about the differences. Uh, I just bought the GX430T uh, because I wanted to move up from this. The, the main difference between these two is that this one has a 203 DPI printing head, whereas this one has a 300 DPI printing head, so it's a lot more, you know, higher quality. Um, and this one also has a screen on it, which, I mean, a lot of people might look at the screen and say it's higher tech, but, you know, nobody really needs to use the screen if you're just printing off shipping labels. All you need is a feed button. Um, and this one also has the Ethernet and serial and USB. Whereas this one has the just serial USB and a very old style printer port. Uh, and you also see that um, this one's the direct model, so that's why it's also so much smaller. So right here it only has a direct head, whereas the GX430T has this whole apparatus in here uh, to load the these cartridges, which is part of the thermal transfer printing. Uh, so the cool thing about the GX430T is that it can also do direct because these are both the same print heads. Um, so this is the, well, this is the actually the 200 DPI version, um, but it uses the same technology to print thermal transfer and direct. So I'm gonna load some direct labels and you can tell that it's a direct label because you can just take your nail on it. And if you scratch it, oh, here it's not very good. Actually, these might be thermal transfer. Yeah, there. So you can take like a sharp object and I just cut my nails so I can't do it, but if you use, you can use your nails and you can just scratch it and you can see. Okay, so that's a, that's gonna be a direct label. You can see that, it looks like a pencil marking almost. Uh, and to load these, it's the same. They, these all have the adjustment knob right here that you can use to basically preset how, how it will uh, hold it. Uh, but it's nice, single-handed, full part. Um, and then when you load it, you just want to put it underneath those tabs on the side. And make sure it's just centered. Pull it down. And then you need to feed a label. So just press the feed, and it'll feed out a single label. Uh, the process is the same on this one. So if I take a roll of direct... Put it in. Just make sure it's in the center oh, and underneath the tabs. Put it down and load a label. And this one is a bit slower. This one only does four inches per second, whereas this one's a six because it doesn't have all that other stuff in there. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to my computer and print a test label on both of these and I'll show the differences. Yeah, so you can see that this this one's quite a bit slower. This one's only going to be 50% faster, but this one has 50% higher quality. So it's uh, it's kind of a trade-off. As you can see, the closer. Now, any imperfections in here are most likely going to be from the label and the paper quality rather than the actual printer head. Um, here. So you can see these, these labels aren't really that great to compare it because um, the only labels that you're going to have trouble with are the international shipping labels because those have much smaller barcodes but you can see this is the 200 dpi version two, well 203 but it doesn't matter you can see there's a bit of a difference in the quality right there but there's definitely a lot more down by the barcode 
you can see those small lines, it's hard to get that, that def definition in there, but this one does it with no problem. Um, there's other, you know, names and everything, and, you know, the darkness settings may not be the same. Um, but now I'm going to put the thermal roll on here, and we'll see what that does. I don't really have the tear off adjusted that that great on here. So putting thermal roll on is a bit different um, because first off you can't use the direct labels. So this is a different type of label and if you were to scratch this one you wouldn't be able to see those marks. I believe these are more paper-based instead of they don't have like the uh, the direct stuff on there, whatever it is. And then this one's actually already used. I can install a new one, but you'll get it has a protective film around it, which just sticks up onto this part. And normally you're supposed to use like another empty spool, so this cardboard insert, and that just sticks on there. Uh, but this is 3D printed. So it's, uh, it's plastic uh, because I uh, accidentally threw away the last one. And this just goes in here. It'll align with tabs or indents that it has in there. I just want to make sure that you get it on there. And it's very staticky. Now, if I'm just taking this uh, what I'm going to use is just packaging tape. So you really only need a single piece like that. This might even be too long. And you can take the roll, just stick it underneath. It's hard because it's so light and so thin. It's like it's thinner than tissue paper. So, yep, stick it on. And then I tape it up onto the roll, make sure it's all round, and then you can use this knob right here to roll a bit of it up. And you want to get enough so that, you know, you don't have any crinkle, crinks down here. And then make sure you got everything set up correctly, and then it just goes down. Now to set this one up, you have to go into the software and you have to select that it's a thermal transfer. Okay, so now I'm going to print a test label on both of these again. Yeah, I did not... <laughs> I didn't have the tear adjust correct, so it sucked my label in. So we'll just load another one here. There it is. So immediately you can see, um, besides that, that's probably just because I just put the roll in. Um, you will end up with a couple, here, I'll take this up here. You'll end up with a couple lines like this. And uh, normally this isn't that common though. It more depends on the type of um, roll that you're putting into it, the, the transfer roll. Not like the labels, but the, uh, I guess the toner. Um, but you can see that the blacks are a lot darker and a lot more shiny. So, ignoring that line, you know, you can see there's, everything's a lot darker, and that can all be adjusted too, because those print heads are adjustable. But you can see it's all reflective too. So, if we take this, over, you can see it's more of a, like a matte finish. I'll put this up here. So, yep, see up there. Whereas this one's a lot darker and this one's going to be a lot more durable. Like this one will not fade in sunlight. So uh, that's not good. 
Okay, those are not going to come apart. <laughs> um, but you can see, you know, the transfer label. It's going to have a lot higher resolution. Maybe this isn't the best example to see it. Um, like this one, you're still stuck with all those those lines right there just because it those dots aren't small enough to get into it. And for these labels, you, a 200 DPI printer, it's absolutely fine. Um, but for international, like to Canada, there's a small barcode, like the size, but it's more like a QR code, like a style. So it's got a bunch of small dots and you can barely, well, you can't really see it with a uh, 200 DPI. So you pretty much need a 300 uh, DPI printer if you're gonna be printing international or at least to Canada. Uh, but these standard ones work fine with 200 DPI. This is the minimum that you need for most, most shipping labels. Um, I guess there's not that much else to talk about. Um, you can get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on either of these. They're all the same. Really, the difference is just the T, the D, and the 20 and the 30 right there. So 20 would be 200 DPI, 300, 300, or 30, 300 DPI. The T would be thermal transfer, but of course it also supports direct and the D is direct only. So it's, it's gonna be a lot smaller too. That's another benefit. I mean, this one's giant. Uh, the pictures don't actually show how big this one is compared to just the size of this one. I mean, it's truly a lot smaller. Um, you can find these on eBay for really cheap. This one, I think I picked up refurbished for about, I wanna say like 130. Um, and it had like something something in the high like 70,000 labels printed on it and I mean it's you can obviously see it's still working fine and same with this one I got this one used um, and it had like the same around 70 80,000 labels on it most companies will buy these and then use them for like a number of years and then they'll sell them used on eBay just because yeah once like the warranty expires and once they get old they you know, they don't want to risk them breaking down, so they just give them out really cheap. I mean, and they're still rock solid printers. Uh, it's much better than the other brands like um, Dymo and uh, Rolo. I would recommend these over any of those because, you know, these brand new are industrial grade and they're like $600 brand new. I mean, this one was probably $800 if you were to buy it brand new. Um, yeah, but overall, this is probably the best one and the one that I'd recommend because, you know, it's only time to time. It's probably 60 bucks more, but you get the capability of printing thermal labels and you can also do direct. So it's basically a GX430D and a GX430T in one. You can kind of think of it like that. Um, and it's also has the 300 DPI, and it's really not that much more. Like, I, I paid 175 for this one. And it's, you know, it was used, but include, it included, like, a the power adapter um, and a USB cable. And that's really all you need for one of these if you're just doing 4x6 ship, shipping labels. And you can do you can do all other types of labels and anything. The software is easy to set up. Uh, these are pretty much just plug and play. Of course, you need labels and... Uh, the software installed but they're really easy to get working and um, just because they're so industrial you know you can't really look anywhere else I mean I used one of these will outperform any new printer at the same price range uh, so that's what I have to say about these printers um, yeah you can see these have been through a lot too and this one surprisingly is in good condition for what I for how many labels it's printed. You can actually print the test label to see how many it's printed. You wait for one flash and then, of course I have this one way too dark. You hold, wait for one. Um, so you can see this one has, yep, 703,000 inches on it. Uh, which is a lot of a lot of shipping labels and this one i don't think i'm going to be able to read this one i have it too dark or maybe okay so this one definitely doesn't have as many on it but that see that so that's i think i said seventy thousand earlier so that might be a bit over but one hundred eighty-seven thousand. so 
prove this one's been used more, and I don't think that this label ever said that the head's been changed. Um, it says, yeah, it says the head has 730,000 on it. I don't know if I really believe that, though, but I would think that it would know if it changed it, too. And, uh, so, yep, yeah. yep, these are amazing printers.